Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. First off, once again, I hope everybody's doing okay. We're not going to harp on all the madness in the world right now because I think most of us would like to just get away from it and forget about it for a while. But I do hope that everybody watching, that you and your families are doing all right during these very difficult and crazy times. Now this one today is going to be a little bit different because... Long story short, I picked up a couple spiders back in August and thought I deleted the videos. Well, while I was cleaning out my computer today, I found that I still had them. So as luck would have it, I have to rehouse one of them already because it has outgrown the enclosure. So we're going to have the original unboxing of this one as well as a few months later, we're going to show what I'm going to put it into now that it's become a beautiful juvenile. I picked these up from Cold Blood on Arachnoboards. Awesome guy. He's been a moderator there for years, knows his stuff, been in the hot forever and he does some breeding and sells his stuff online quite a bit over there at Arachnoboard. So I always like to peek on the buy, sell, trade section of Arachnoboard to see what's for sale. He had some stuff. I've been kind of looking for an opportunity to buy from because I do like to support people that are doing the breeding. And I got these two beautiful ones here. So enough of me talking. Let's get into the actual video. <laughs> So while on Arachnoboards the other day, I happened to notice that Cold Blood, one of the moderators of Arachnoboards, was selling Omothymus Shiote. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I have a hard time with this one. And I've been looking for those guys for quite a while. Now, for those of you who don't know, Arachnoboards is not only just a great place to go for information, but they do have their own kind of classified section. And you can find some amazing deals from breeders on there. And again, we want to support people that are captive breeding in the hobby. So you may pay a little more for shipping because obviously people that are just breeding on their own hobbyists aren't going to be able to offer offer the same types of uh, stock as, say, a dealer, but you're supporting the captive breeding efforts, and I really like to do that when possible. And this was an easy one because it was a species I wanted, and I know Cold Blood does a lot of breeding, has stuff up all the time, stellar reputation, so I figured we'd get a couple of these guys. So what we're going to do is open this up and then do a quick rehousing. <clears throat> if I can figure out how to open it. Oh, there we go. And the transaction went beautifully. He was ridiculously responsive, which was great. I mean, I emailed him or messaged him on Arachnoboards. He got right back to me, and uh, we went back and forth. He's got some excellent shipping options as far as, you know, not having to spend a terrible amount of money with shipping, because shipping can be expensive, especially when you go FedEx. So we got foam, really nice thick foam here, which is great. Our newspaper. And I see there is one. Chio de Te, I believe is how it's pronounced. Again, I actually was practicing this one before trying to figure out exactly how to pronounce it. And hopefully I've got it right. So really excited about these guys. I've had some people ask me about them and I haven't had them, but looked up pictures a while back and thought they were stunning ones you don't see offered very often. So there they are. And what we're gonna do in a minute is cut for a second and then we'll do a quick rehousing with these guys. I'll probably just do one of them because they're gonna be exactly the same. Now what I have set up here is an arboreal setup. I did put an inch or so of moist substrate in. Again, this is a species that's gonna prefer some moist substrate, but I didn't go overboard because the humidity here has been very, very high. I misted it down, but what I will do is add a water dish after I'm done. And this is a species that I expect will do a little bit of burrowing at this size. I know a lot of these guys, we read arboreal, we expect them to be hanging out and about up on top of the cork bark, but a lot of them will go down behind here, grab up some of this. I got some uh, leaf litter, some sphagnum moss, and some of the substrate, and they'll probably set up around here a little den, do a little burrowing, make some dirt curtains. And this is supposedly a fast-growing species, so although these guys are about... I believe about three quarters of an inch to an inch. I expect them to grow out of these enclosures rather quickly. All right, this is childproof, so let's see. Oh, that was easy. All right. Get way down in there. All right. And the trick with these is to make sure that the paper towel or whatever the packing material is doesn't close up. Oh, well, that works. So what we're going to do, actually that is incredibly convenient. Gently A 
little guy. Go with the brush side. Let's There we go. Oh. Oh, that's a good size one. That'd be fine in there. There it is. What a cutie. Now, again, we want it to go back in here where hopefully it'll set up around there. I'll try feeding them again. I know a lot, I know a lot of people wait to feed theirs a couple day, I've, uh, a couple days after unpacking them. I found the majority of mine will eat the first day, but we'll see. Give these guys a chance to settle in. This is obviously a larger enclosure for it, and we want to make sure that there's enough cover. The trick is if you use a larger enclosure with these guys, make sure there's plenty of cover so that they can feel secure, and then any prey item you drop in here will eventually find its way over, and it'll grab it. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one off camera. I actually... It's hot as heck, and Billy and I just got back from walking three miles in 90 degree heat with 80% humidity or 85% humidity, so we're both tanked. But uh, there we go, awesome transaction. Again, this is Cold Blood. Look them up. I'll put a link in my uh, in the comment section. What is it called? Uh, the description. I'll put a link to it. And I encourage people to always check Arachnoboards Classifieds. I believe it's called For Sale, Trade, or Want to Buy, I think is the actual name of it. But you'll get some amazing deals there. Just make sure the people are local and not shipping from overseas because, unfortunately, there are some people over there that will try to ship from other countries or from the Philippines, and that is not legal. So there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, she o te Oh, she o te It's spelled like school, so it could be ski o te if it's German, but I don't think it is. Never ends. All right, so now that you've seen us house the slings, this one here is now a hefty juvenile. I, full disclosure, haven't seen it that much at all since August. These guys will bury as slings, and you'll see I use a slightly different enclosure here than the 32-ounce deli cup. I had one in the 32-ounce deli cup. This one I put in one of these Amac boxes. These guys are a fast-growing species, so if you do get a sling, you want to know that it's going to grow very quickly and probably outgrow its sling enclosure quite fast. Now, this is one of the 3 by 2.75 inch by 6 inch tall Amac boxes. What we're going to be putting it into down here is... The, I think it's Deidro. It, there's a couple, a lot of people make these, and I like them, although they're not particularly clear. They, they're a good size for a juvenile arboreal species or a juvenile arboreal species like this one that may do some digging. They offer a good amount of room. But I believe I got these for four for about $35, which is a pretty good deal, and they're 5.5 liters or so. If you look, it's kind of a standard size that you'll see all over the internet. The original ones I got from Amazon. They stopped carrying. Then I bought these. I don't know if they're still available. I'll try to put a link if they are because I know somebody will ask me for a link. And no, if I don't put a link, it means I just couldn't, the product is not available. I couldn't find a link for it. It's not that I'm trying to be a jerk about it. All right. So to start these guys off, what I did was the old cork bark hide, a lot of moist substrate. This is a species, one of the species that, although arboreal as an adult and as a larger specimen, they will burrow as slings and juveniles. So you want to give them room to burrow. And it basically built a little burrow behind here it had a little web turret up on one side that it would close off when it's pre-malt and that's the only time i'd know it was in pre-malt i would drop prey in the prey would disappear i would assume it was eating if i dropped prey in and the prey was there the next day i knew it wasn't so no they're very very secretive remind me a lot of my oviolosopes as far as just you don't see them all that much but after its last malt it, as you can see here it's got tunnels all the way around it's exposed this thing is too small for it so it's time to get it out into something else these guys are great eaters. They've been fantastic eaters. Again, the growth rate has been fantastic. We had since August, what is that, about seven months, eight months around there. And it's gone from a little teeny tiny sling that you saw in the beginning to when this one stretched out probably about three, three and a half inches. So what I'm going to try to do here, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right, let's try, I was going to try to take the top off, but it has since webbed the top. So this one may bolt out. It's moving a little bit. Yeah. This is going to make it bolt. Come on. Come on. And I'm hoping to get a good picture of it. No, 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 no. There you go. There we go. Oh, cardboard. Crap, All right. 
So, of course, it's going to go right to the top, but we will, I don't know if Billy can see that there, get it under the light. It's a little tiger booty. I think it's Malaysian, I think the common name is like Malaysian Earth Tiger. If you look up pictures of these guys as adults, they are ridiculously stunning and supposedly can get up to about eight, nine inches. Again, I'm always a little skeptical when people talk about these giant sizes for, max, max sizes for tarantulas, but I, they do, I know the OV velocities. His foot is like literally out of the hole. Oh, top. oh, that's gonna make this fun. Yeah, so just. We can touch it. It's, it's if you're not tarantula logo. <laughs> <coughs> it recreated it. Which I believe is Michelangelo, right? Isn't that the Michelangelo yes, thing pointing? I think so. Pointing toward God. All right. So here is, we're going to, this is, I wonder if it would be easier to poke it. Nah. Right, get your little leg in there. Get your little leg in there. Uh, is your little leg slow out? Is your little leg slow out? What the heck? It's in now. Right. Barely. I think it might. I don't know. I can't tell. Okay, there we go. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I kind of want to see this one out and about. You thought the cap dropped. Oh, it's coming back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> No, the cap's stuck for a second. Oh, man. All right, well, okay. we're going to get a good yeah. shot of it one way or another, so. What do you need? I'm going to go ahead and try to get it out in the open on this. Okay. Let's wedge this right in here. I'm going to go back that way. Yeah, I know. It's kind of exposed. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now she goes up and over. I'm try to get her pointing out. She's gonna right behind it. Get a quick shot of her. Whoop! And there she goes. What I'll try to do is pull this out a little bit because she is being reasonable. Let's see if we can move it so we can get a picture of her. There we go, get a nice good shot. Now what we want her to do, obviously, is go in behind here, we'll allow her to go, what she most likely do is do some digging, a little burrowing, she'll use all of this sphagnum, and this is the reason why I put it behind here, she'll use all this sphagnum moss to build up the dirt curtain, so she'll have a nice little area behind here. And if she's anything like my old philosophies, you'll rarely see her. So the next time we do a rehousing, might be sooner than later, because of the amount of size she's putting on with each molt, now quickly she's growing, I got a funny feeling it won't be too long before she's, you know, five inches or so, and we're going to have to put her into an adult enclosure. I was eyeing up an adult enclosure for her, but changed my mind because it would not be sufficient if she did hit that eight or nine inch mark. Beautiful girl. Love the look of her. I'm hoping it's a girl. Supposedly, I believe if I'm not mistaken, and feel free people that have raised these guys before, chime in, but I believe the female, they are sexually dimorphic. I believe the females, as they approach adulthood start to develop more black on the underneath and the males are more red on the ventral side of them. So let's see how that goes if that proves true. So I'm going to go ahead. No, 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 I don't want you under that way. Is she on the top of it? I got to put this thing back. Darn it. Just carefully. Yeah, she's under there. All right. So we're going to let her relax, put this on. So as far as Feeding them, again, they've been great eaters. I've had no problems with any of them eating. She's now taking down, last time I dropped in like a fairly large cricket and she grabbed it up. That's why I realized I needed to get her a new house because she was obviously, between her and the cricket, there wasn't a lot of room in there. So she'll be eating large crickets now. Growth rates fast. I'm trying to think the temperatures, as always in my tarantula room, this winter have been right around, I think the shelf she's on, it's right around 74, 75 degrees or so, and she's done just fine. And hopefully, again, we get the female. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. For adult enclosures, I'm going to look at something bigger than an Exoterra Nano Tall. Those are the 8x8x12 ones. That was what I was eyeing putting her into this time. 
but unfortunately, if she hits that eight inch mark, that's a little tight for an eight inch spider. That's really tight for an eight inch spider. So maybe we'll look at one of the 12 by 12 by 16 inch, I think they are ones, something of that nature, because I do want to see if we can display this one. But again, if she ends up being really shy, that'll kind of determine what I put her in. So there we go. Oh, Shiodate, beautiful spider doing very, very well. And obviously I'll continue to do updates on these guys. I do encourage people that like the old world, you know, the larger old worlds, definitely give these guys a look-see. So again, this spider is looking gorgeous. And if you look up pictures of these guys, what they look like when they are full grown, hopefully I get a female out of it because they are stunning. So again, a huge thank you to Cold Blood and Arachnoboards. Awesome experience overall. I mean, he was fantastic to work with, to deal with. His response times were just ridiculously quick. So I encourage people to go check him out and see what he's got to offer or just hang out on Arachnoboards and you know soak up some of his knowledge. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you've never seen any of my videos before, and would like to check some out, you can click them over there. If you liked it enough that you'd like to subscribe, very much appreciated. You can click the circle right up in here. Love getting comments. Answer all the comments. May take me a couple days because I get a lot of them, but if I don't answer right away, feel free to shoot me an email and ask me what's up or another comment and ask me what's up. That'll do it for this time, guys. Stay safe. We'll catch you all next time.